The Honourable Member for Bona Vista Buren Trinity. When I ran to be a Member of Parliament in beautiful Newfoundland and Labrador, I did not expect to be standing here today, resigning from a job I love, representing people I love, and spending time with an incredible caucus, but as well in the company of incredible individuals on both sides of this place. That includes you, Mr. Speaker, our table officers, our pages, our security, and all who work in the public service. We work here because we know we can play a part in making a difference in our country. As MPs, we are here because others made it possible for us to have the privilege to serve. I am so thankful to my constituents for giving me this opportunity. It has been an honour to be here. It has been an honour to serve with all of you as fellow MPs. It has also been an honour to serve for 10 years as a Cabinet Minister in Newfoundland and Labrador and here in Ottawa, supported by a dedicated public service, men and women who are committed to doing their very best. I have also been blessed with very caring and capable constituency employees in both Newfoundland and Labrador and Ottawa. They worked tirelessly with me over the past 20 years to respond to the issues facing our constituents and to the many volunteers who worked on my campaigns over the past 20 years, there are no words to express just how much I appreciated your commitment and hard work. Making my decision was not an easy one for all the reasons I just stated. However, given my reason for reaching that decision made it easier. And the outpouring of support for and appreciation of that decision has been overwhelming. No one has been more understanding and supportive than my seatmate and friend, the Prime Minister. He continually reminds his caucus to put our families first, because it is so easy for us as MPs to get caught up in our work, work that we love but can consume us if we let it, and many of us do that. Standing here saying goodbye, I think of our friend and colleague, Arnold Chan, who was taken from his family and friends way too soon. I think of all who battle cancer and do so with courage. I can think of no one who faced a battle with cancer with more courage than Arnold. I was a whip when he was elected in 2014, and in addition to other responsibilities in that role, you become a confidant and a source of strength when needed. For Arnold, I know that sharing my experience with cancer helped in some way as he fought to survive while doing a job he loved. We often spoke about how staying involved and keeping your mind occupied really does help. He was such a kind, courageous man who fought to the end and inspired many including all of us in this house. Things happen in life to all of us that impact and sometimes change completely the direction that our lives go in. Things also happen in life to help prepare us for those changes. And while we may not realize it when they happen, it does become apparent when strength and courage are needed to get through difficult times. The memories I have of the strength and courage of another young man who dipped his leg in the Atlantic Ocean in Newfoundland and Labrador before starting his Marathon of Hope will always stay with me. I was a reporter with CBC at the time and assigned to cover the story. Terry and I talked about his bout with cancer and his vision of using his experience to bring a focus to the need for research. 
As the interview ended, I commented on his curly hair. He had a lot of it. He told me it was a positive outcome for him, having lost his hair while being given chemotherapy drugs to battle the cancer. As anyone who has fought cancer will tell you, remaining positive is half the battle. Unfortunately, there are other factors beyond our control. I followed Terry's trek across the country, and like other Canadians, was saddened when it was reported he couldn't continue. While Terry couldn't complete the marathon, he made a difference, and 37 years later, people throughout our country take part in the annual Terry Fox Run. In fact, this week is the Terry Fox School Run throughout Canada. Terry inspired many, and just as I was inspired by Arnold, I was inspired so many years ago by Terry. Little did I know that several years later, I would be diagnosed with breast cancer. Not once, but twice most recently three years ago. Like Terry, I lost my hair. And while it may not look like it now, it grew back curly. <laughs> As it grew back, I thought of Terry and his curls, but especially his positive attitude. When illness strikes a family, the natural thing to do is pull together and go in survival mode. I saw that with the Fox family, and that is what happened in my family, and no one was more determined that I was going to survive my first bout with cancer than my daughter Carla, who was only 25 at the time. Carla set <laughs> Carla sat through all of my chemotherapy and radiation treatments and made sure a chart was prepared listing all the medications I needed to take if I was going to survive. She was determined to make sure I didn't miss any. So needless to say, she has a full appreciation of the toll cancer can take, but she also knows surviving cancer is possible. And being aware <laughs> and being aware of that became even more important when it was discovered two years ago that I carry the BRAC gene. Having the BRAC gene means your body is susceptible to any number of cancers. It also means those, clo those closest to you are at risk. Getting my head around what having the gene could mean for my children, Carla, Jason, and Heidi, and their children, if they inherited it from me, was difficult. And needless to say, remains so, because unfortunately, two of my three children did. While we believe knowledge is the power, very personal decisions that involve taking measures to prevent cancer require a lot of courage. Having the BRAC gene also means running the risk of dealing with genetic discrimination in areas like insurance access and workplace practices. No one should be discriminated against on the basis of their genetic characteristics. I am pleased this government supports adding genetic characteristics as an explicit prohibited ground of discrimination in the Canadian Human Rights Act. The Minister of Justice has written to the Premiers of the provinces and territories to get their support. In her correspondence with the Premiers, the Minister wrote, I reaffirm the high importance that the provinces and territories take the necessary steps within their respective jurisdictions to prohibit discrimination on the grounds of genetic characteristics. With an interlocking scheme of federal, provincial, territorial legislation, our country has achieved comprehensive human rights measures prohibiting discrimination on the grounds of race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, age, sex, sexual orientation, disability, and others. Mr. Speaker, the prohibition of genetic discrimination should be added to their proud human rights heritage.
My plea today on behalf of all Canadians who have genetic characteristics is that every Premier in our country will join the federal government and take the action required to do so. As a woman who has spent 28 years in political life, I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to encourage more women to get involved in what I consider an honourable profession where it really is possible to make a difference in the lives of others, especially the most vulnerable. Unfortunately, I have observed over the years why they may choose not to go down that path. It takes a strong individual to stand up and fight back against bullying of any sort, especially if the bully is in a position of authority. And while I re refer to politics as a profession in which women may choose not to get involved because of these tactics, the harassing and belittling is not limited to politics, nor is it limited to women, but it is safe to say it is more pervasive among men toward women. The question, Mr. Speaker, is why? Why do some people feel it is okay to treat another individual as less than equal? As I continue to encourage more women to get involved, I tell them of my positive experiences and that, in my opinion, there is no profession more rewarding. I also say to them my encouragement doesn't mean I think women do a better job. Instead, we do a different job based on our experiences. I thank the Prime Minister for the opportunity to serve in a gender-balanced cabinet. It reinforces... It reinforced my belief that when men and women work together, respect each other, and are treated equally, the best work can be accomplished. In my 28 years of political life, I have seen and heard it all. I have dealt with and heard about the experiences of others that should never have occurred. As I look at my daughter and granddaughter in the gallery, and know that in the 2015 election, only 88 of the 338 members of Parliament elected were women, just 26 percent. The fight for gender equality is far from over. And while some inroads have been made, it is a fight which all of us, men and women, should take on so daughters and granddaughters in our country can have the opportunity to serve and make a difference. As the Prime Minister says repeatedly, better is always possible. By working together, better is indeed possible. Mr. Speaker, I have said to anyone who will listen, I am blessed with an amazing family. As they watch today from the gallery and at home, I thank them for their tremendous support during the entire 28 years I have been in political life support that never wavered. They knew how much I appreciated the opportunity I had been given and that I thrived on it. Having served in provincial politics prior to being elected in 2008 as a member of parliament, we knew as a family the job would take me away from home more often than I would be at home. And as an MP representing a riding <coughs> of 240 communities, even when I was in Newfoundland and Labrador, it meant I was rarely home. My husband of 43 years, Howard has put up <laughs> Howard has put up with such a crazy lifestyle. And knowing how much I enjoyed my job, campaigned vigorously every election to help me keep it. In fact, I always said, we ran. He has been the stalwart in our family, a husband, a dad, a father-in-law, and now a poppy to Katie May, <coughs> Meadow, Ruby Jude, and Elliot, to whom we say we love you to the moon and back. Katie May's response is always, I love you more. Thank you for always making me feel 
You understood how important my job was. Thank you as well for showing me that as important as it was, you knew was never more important than you. I am so looking forward to spending more time at home, making memories with you for many, many years to come. Thank you. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Monsieur le Président, c'est à la fois avec plaisir et tristesse que je prends aujourd'hui la parole pour remercier une collègue et une amie chère, la députée de Bonavista Buren Trinity. From the first moment I arrived on Parliament Hill, almost ten years ago, I got to meet good people who, every day, strived to do great things. People who were focused on serving Canadians, on tackling difficult challenges, on trying to figure out the best way forward for our country. People whose diligent efforts and dedicated work never fail to make a positive, meaningful difference in the lives of those who elected them. The member for the then riding of Random Buren St. George's was one of those people. Newly elected to this House together on October 2008, we were both technically rookies, but I knew very well that unlike for me, the member didn't fit that label. En tant que conseillère principale au bureau du Premier ministre Wells et ancienne ministre provinciale à Terre-Neuve et Labrador, elle avait déjà répondu à l'appel du service public bien avant que nos chemins se croisent. En effet, Elle avait déjà consacré sa carrière à ce qu'elle fait le mieux, servir les gens de Terre-Neuve et Labrador avec passion et dévouement. Une fois arrivée à Ottawa, elle s'est rapidement fait connaître pour son incroyable éthique de travail et sa détermination à aider les autres. She was appointed opposition deputy house leader and then liberal whip. Now we all know that the whip's job is nominally about discipline but she understood that it was actually more about morale and team building. Now remember, the party had been dealt its worst ever election defeat in 2011, and we were reeling without a permanent leader, and it was this member who wrangled and managed and motivated the 35 of us, helping us with her strength and resilience to remain united and focused. And once I became leader, I relied on her time and time again through some extremely difficult moments for her support and leadership. No matter what the situation, she has always been for me a model of grace and compassion, a source of intelligence and deep wisdom. Monsieur le Président, que ce soit dans l'opposition ou au gouvernement, que membre de notre caucus ou de notre cabinet, La députée de Bonavista Buren Trinity a toujours été une excellente porte-étendard pour ses électeurs ici à Ottawa. Elle a toujours veillé à ce que les gens de Terre-Neuve et Labrador aient une place à la table des décisions et que leurs intérêts soient représentés et leur voix entendues. Et tous les Canadiens s'en portent mieux. But what has perhaps left the greatest impression on her colleagues, constituents, and fellow citizens is the member's strength of character. We will miss not only a skilled politician, but also a dedicated citizen, a devoted wife, an incredible mother, and a loving grandmother. A great Canadian who will continue to inspire women across this country to choose a career in politics who will continue to motivate young people to serve their community and continue to encourage those who are fighting an illness to keep on fighting. Canadians 
like the members on all sides of this aisle, will not forget the courage and fortitude shown by the member in the face of adversity. She is, and always will be, an example of resilience, passion, and grace to us all. Monsieur le Président, cette députée est sans aucun doute l'une des personnes les plus travaillantes que j'ai eu le plaisir de connaître. La voir avec moi, à mes côtés, depuis le jour où j'ai décidé de servir ce grand pays, a été pour moi un vrai privilège. She has dedicated her career to serving the world in which her children and grandchildren would grow up, and now the time has come for her to enjoy it with them. And of course, with Howard, her extraordinary husband, to whom we are all deeply grateful for having shared her for so many years in service to her community, to her province, and to her country. Thank you, Howard. <laughs> Judy, my dear friend, I'm going to sorely miss you having you by my side. But I know, we all know, that your family and friends need you by their side even more. I love you. Thank you. Honorable member for Moose Jaw Lake Center Lanigan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I have to say at the outset what a pleasure it is to see again my friend from Newfoundland sitting in her accustomed place to the right hand side of the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> you know, Mr. Speaker, one of the most commonly asked questions we as MPs get when we go back home from our constituents is what is that MP like? What is that person like that you work with? And when it comes to answering questions about my friend opposite, I only had one answer and will always have one answer, and that is, she's one of the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Me Speaker, there, is, there are so many reasons for that. Primarily, it comes down to one thing. She just simply has a good heart. And that's the measuring stick that I use when evaluating whether it be MPs or citizens or people that I meet, perhaps for the first time. Do they have a good heart? Not only does a member opposite have a good heart, she has a big heart. And that has been exhibited time and time again over the last few decades that she has been in public service. I know what motivated her back in 2006 to seek public office. And it wasn't for the glamour. It wasn't for the money. It was merely for the fact she wanted to help people. And she wanted to make a positive contribution to her constituency, to her province and to her country. And Mr. Speaker, she has surely done that in spades. Since 2006 to 2008, she served in the cabinet, the province of Newfoundland in several capacities. She was a minister looking after several portfolios. She did all admirably well. But then of course came the inevitable call to move up and onwards and she did. Arriving in Ottawa in 2008, and as our Prime Minister said, immediately demonstrated to all of her parliamentary colleagues on both sides of the aisle her work ethic, her competency, and her love for this place. Almost immediately, she was appointed Deputy House Leader and fulfilled all of those obligations admirably. But I think she left perhaps her greatest mark on this Parliament starting in 2011 when she was appointed Party Whip. Now, Mr. Speaker, I know that you understand, and, and many others in this place may understand, that being a party whip is not the easiest job in the world, and the Prime Minister has referenced that. Well, think of this. Not only is the job of whip itself a difficult position to attain and a difficult job to perform well, this member inherited the job, was asked to do the job of party whip of a third party, a party, as the Prime Minister explained quite rightfully, that just had suffer, say, suffered one of the most devastating electoral defeats that the grand old Liberal Party had seen in its long and storied history. It was reduced to 35 seats, having only a few years ago been in Parliament. 
Now, Mr. Speaker, not only was that a daunting task for anyone to take on, to be the whip of a morale-ridden party in third place, the Prime Minister, at least the leader at the time, the interim leader, Mr. Ray, asked my friend from Newfoundland to take on this job. And the challenges were even greater than one would think because, number one, she was a female in a very heavily ridden, testosterone-driven caucus, whose morale was low, whose unity was questioned, and yet, against all of those obstacles, she not only survived, she thrived. Why? Not only because she is competent, but she is the consummate team player. And Mr. Speaker, as we all know in this place and in politics in general, Loyalty is everything. And my friend, my member, demonstrated her loyalty to her party, to her friends, her colleagues, and her constituents time and time and time again. And for that, I say not only do we thank you, I admire you, and I respect you greatly, and I always will. My friend opposite inherited the role of whip, also brought with it some other challenges, far greater than anything she had experienced before in her life. And that's when she discovered that she had cancer. Now, Mr. Speaker, for many of us who have experienced through our families personal tragedies, family members who have contracted insidious diseases like cancer, it is not the easiest thing in the world to talk publicly about it. In fact, many people try and keep their condition private. This member did not do that. She chose not to take that path. She chose to go public with her cancer, letting others know, thousands upon thousands of women and men across Canada know that it's okay to talk about a disease that could potentially kill her. But she wanted to demonstrate the fact that she was willing to fight as hard as she could to beat this terrible, terrible disease, and she did. Speaker, back in those days, every Tuesday afternoon, I had the pleasure of spending some time with my friend opposite because we were both members of the House Leader's offices. I in government, she in the third party. So from 3.30 to 4.30 every Tuesday afternoon, we'd have House Leader's meetings and we would discuss all of the issues of the day, come to some conclusions and move on. But during that period of time as well, it was during the period of time where the member opposite was severely ill. Some meetings she could not attend, others she did. And I remember watching with great admiration how she faced this insidious, insidious disease head on with courage, equanimity, determination, and more than anything else, an unfailing sense of humor. And Mr. Speaker, I, I recall on several occasions thinking if the situations were different and I were the one facing these health challenges, would I be able to meet the challenges with the grace and the dignity as the member opposite? And I think I could not. To her, I say this. You have demonstrated above and beyond not only your courage, your determination, but an unflagging spirit for life. And you truly are an inspiration to all of us and all of women across Canada who have battled the similar disease. And thank you for that. It will never, ever be forgotten. Mr. Speaker, her health has returned and other challenges were just around the corner. As a matter of fact, in 2015, if I recall, there was an election in which the Liberals sprang from third party to government and almost immediately one of the first appointments the Prime Minister made, and I congratulate him for this, was the appointment of my friend to Cabinet. And Mr. Speaker, I'd always learned and heard from my former boss, Prime Minister Harper, the way he approached cabinet positions was simply this. He'd find the most competent people and give them the toughest jobs. And boy, but my friend from Newfoundland must be competent because the job he was, in, he was given by the Prime Minister was almost unspeakable. Think about this for a moment, Mr. Speaker. Think about the files that that member had to manage in her time as cabinet minister. Phoenix in the payroll problems. 
Canada Post and the conflict of whether home delivery would be abandoned or retained. Shared Services Canada with the massive government IT transformation. Now, Mr. Speaker, I would think that those would be formidable for three cabinet ministers to manage, yet this cabinet minister did all three, and she did them exceedingly well. <laughs> my, only, my only regret, Mr. Speaker, is that I was hoping that the minister would stay in Parliament and continue on in her role, because as chairman of the Government Operations and Estimates Committee, the minister appeared before our committee on several occasions, and I was looking forward to continued appearances by the member until at least 2019, when then I hoped I would be meeting her, but that's when she would be in opposition. But that's for another discussion, Mr. Speaker, that we won't get into now. Mr. Speaker, I, I also have to say that, without question, her love of politics has only been exceeded by her love of family. Anyone who knows this member knows that she has an unqualified and unreserved love for her entire family. They are, are her heart, her soul, her being. Family is everything to this minister, and for that I admire her so very, very much as an example of what can be done to combine both the love of family and the love of country in one very, very competent package. And I must say that even though we will miss her and miss her here in Ottawa, I know that her family is going to receive her well, and I know that the only, probably the only two little people who are going to love seeing their grandma more than the member opposite are future grandchildren. And I'm sure that they will know as I do, since I'm a grandfather myself of two beautiful granddaughters, they are going to be receiving the greatest gift of all. They will see their mother and their grandmother home at last to stay, and I have no doubts that the member opposite will be the greatest grandma in Canada. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, on behalf of all of my colleagues, on behalf of all of my colleagues in Her Majesty's loyal opposition, I want to congratulate my friend for her many years of service to this place, to her constituents, and to her country, and I wish her nothing but health and happiness in the future, and let me just conclude by saying, the member is and always will be one of the good ones. L'honorable député d'Algoma, Manitoulin, Capus Casing. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of my leader and all members of the New Democratic Party, I also rise in the House today to pay tribute to the member for Bonavista, Buren, Trinity, who is leaving public life to spend more quality time with her family. I am sure it's a decision that many of us struggle with from time to time, but as we hear today about this member's journey through her public and professional life, we know she has made a decision that is in the best interest for her and her family. Truly, this was not something that was arrived to lightly. Given that the member has been involved in public life for more than 28 years, we know that people are often called in the service of their communities, province, or country. Lorsque quelqu'un réussit à bâtir un long record politique si impressionnant au fil des années, tel que la députée de Bonavista, Buren, Trinity, a accompli, c'est comprenable pourquoi les citoyens et citoyennes lui ont fait confiance à plusieurs reprises. Elle a été députée provinciale et fédérale, ainsi que ministre du cabinet. Mais surtout, elle est une personnalité politique très populaire qui a consacré une très grande partie de sa vie à bien représenter ses citoyens et citoyennes. Mr. Speaker, those who are most familiar with her record and work, her constituents, have consistently supported her efforts on their behalf, and it is no small testament to her good work that the voters gave her the largest percentage of vote in all of Canada during the last election. 82 percent, Mr. Wow. Speaker.
in that respect, she will go out at the very top, and that is something we can all congratulate her on. Now, the member talked about her constituency and how many communities she actually represents. And I think it's only uh, an honour for me to be able to speak today uh, and honour her, uh, given the large constituency that I represent in Algoma, Manitoulin, and Kapuskasing. And I fully understand when she talked about, you know, even though you're home, you're not home. I haven't been home for two weeks now. And uh, I really enjoy what I do. Uh, but I know that there will come a time as well where I will decide at some point that it's going to be time. The, the people in our constituency understand that as well. And uh, sometimes we feel uh, extremely sad that you know, we can't be there for the birthdays, we can't be there for the anniversaries. But, Mr. Speaker, it is those people that keep us going. So none of us, Mr. Speaker, are able to hold these posts without a lot of help. We ask for the goodwill of our constituents, but we rely on the teams we are a part of to help us along the way. The like-minded individuals, in truth, an army of volunteers who help us get elected, staff members who support us in Parliament and in our constituencies, community contacts who keep us grounded and help focus many of our efforts, and of course, our families, who carry us through the roughest patches and help us celebrate the very best moments too. Perhaps it is the family who pays the highest price when someone is called to public service, Mr. Speaker. While we can speak of the commitment, dedication and sacrifice of the individuals who decide to embark on this path, we understand that those who make the greatest sacrifice are often the ones at home. The path of political success can be a hindrance to the goals and desires we have for our homes and life. In that respect, we are borrowing the politician from their family, and we would like to extend our sincere gratitude to the member's husband, Howard, her children, Carla, Jason, and Heidi, and grandchildren, for their generosity in sharing the member for Bonavista Buren Trinity with us. I became an MP in the same election that brought the member to this place. And although we didn't have the opportunity to work together much while she was in opposition, I did have occasion to work with her once she became a minister, Mr. Speaker. In that capacity, she was always approachable and understanding. It was clear she understood that although we can be partisan players, the work we do on behalf of our constituencies and the people who trust us to represent them must cut above that fray. I am sure that many of us can echo these sentiments, and I would like to thank the member for her kindness and work on behalf of all people of Canada. The member for Bonavista Buren Trinity is leaving us so she can spend more quality time with her family, which is entirely understandable. But few of us will be surprised if we see her adding her voice to the issues of the day from time to time still. It would be too much to ask someone who is so obviously driven to disconnect in every way. Mr. Speaker, I want to wish the member for Bonavista Buren Trinity farewell, but not goodbye. On behalf of the New Democratic Party, we wish you the very best as you begin the next chapter in your life. Good luck. Yes. Yes. Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est un grand honneur pour moi d'ajouter quelques mots en, en so, cette occasion vraiment touchant, parce que aussi le député de Bonavista Buren Trinity est aussi un collègue pour moi aussi un ami proche, un ami cher. I have been privileged to work with the Member for Bonavista Buren Trinity in the 41st Parliament. I remain personally grateful for many kindnesses, not least of which was use of a couch during the 62 hours of the filibuster over the Canada Post lockout. I had a very nice nap in her office, Mr. Speaker, and there was nobody else who noticed that I looked like I might be needing one. Uh, I, there are many, many acts of kindness, but 
What sticks with me so much is that she was, at that time, so busy. We've heard from other members accurately, generously and graciously, what kind of job she did and what kind of person she is that even as busy as she was, she never adopted the mantle of, and I'm not naming anyone in particular, but we all know people who get to an elevated position and suddenly, I'm busy and important, who are you? Never happened to the honorable member from Bonavista, Buren, Trinity. She never failed to have time for colleagues and time for friends. And when cancer came back and all of us who know and love her were wrenched by this. She was consistently courageous. She reassured us that she was okay. And she showed up day after day after day, times that I really thought, oh, I wish that she could go home and have a rest. So I won't say anything that people have. There have been many good things pointed out about the Honorable Member for Bonavista, Vera and Trinity, particularly moved by the remarks of the Member for Moose Jaw, Lake Sander Lanigan. Those of us who say goodbye to her today do so with tears in our eyes and love in our hearts because this is a member who will continue to make a difference at home. The reasons she's stepping down now are entirely just and proper. Loved as she is in her riding, she's walking away from a job she loves for the best possible reason being a good mom. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, and to you. I wish to thank all the members uh, who have spoken and certainly endorse uh, what has been said about my dear friend, the Honorable Member for Bonavista Buren Trinity, and I would like to uh, express my own admiration, affection, and best wishes to her and her family.